Welcome to the Craftsman Online Podcast, the only five-star rated Masonic podcast endorsed by the Grand Lodge of New York. Any opinions, thoughts, or viewpoints shared during this program are that of the individual, me, and do not reflect the official position of any Grand Lodge, appendant, or concordant body from which that member may hail. I'm your host, Brother Michael Arce, co-founder of CraftsmanOnline.com, and I say the opinions are of mine because I am also going to be the guest, I'm sorry, my dear listener, for this episode the final one that we're recording for 2022 on It's a Wonderful Masonic Life. Of course, It's a Wonderful Life is considered as one of the greatest films of all time, a true Hollywood classic released in 1946. The film features an all-star cast and is based on the short story The Greatest Gift, which is loosely themed around Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And on this episode, I'll discuss why this movie is part of my holiday routine and what Masonic connections I found throughout the story. But before I begin, just a quick reminder, this is the final episode that we're recording for 2022. I know you're sitting here thinking, what are you guys taking the holidays off? No, I want to invite you starting next week and the following for our countdown of the most listened to podcasts for 2022. I look forward to this all year round. It's like my little treat to you, the dear listener, We have Apple, we have iHeartRadio, the other podcasting services. They do all the math and the analytics. They crunch the data, and I go through and find the 10 most listened to podcast episodes. We start at number 10, and we count ourselves down all the way to number one. Along the way, I kind of recap each podcast episode. We play a clip. We connect with that guest. I look forward to it because it's a great way to look back at some of the wonderful conversations and Masonic discussions that we've had on the Craftsman Online podcast throughout the year. And if you didn't get a chance to listen to some of these episodes, you get a quick clip. I also provide the full countdown list so you can go back and pull those archived episodes and queue them up in your player. So join me for that starting next Monday as we count down the top 10 most listened to podcast episodes for 2022. Then we're jumping into 2023. I'm going to give you a little bit of a teaser release here. We have an exclusive partnership that we formed with The Square Magazine. You've heard my guest, Brother Nicholas Broadway. He's the publisher of The Square. He's been on our podcast a few episodes this year. Nicholas and I have worked it out to where it's going to be a monthly arrangement where he'll be coming on and sharing perspective from some of the great articles and content and work that they do with The Square Magazine I am so looking forward to that. We've also connected with Brother John Nagy to ensure that the coach will be here for another podcast season. So look forward to Brother John once a month as a standing visiting guest on the Craftsman Online podcast. And we've got some great episodes coming up to start the beginning of the year, covering everything from the Illuminati, Texas Freemasonry, a point within a circle, And a project that has truly been a labor of love, a guided meditation podcast with Brother Angel Millar, where he is going to take us to an Egyptian lodge around the turn of the 18th century for a visit. It's fascinating. Uh, And the work that was put into that over the past year, I'm really looking forward to that release date coming out in 2023. Okay, so let's get back to this week's episode, It's a Wonderful Masonic Life. About five years ago, I was a regular contributor for the Midnight Freemasons. It was around the holidays, and I was getting ready to put together my content piece for December when one of my favorite Christmas movies came up. Now, just as a spoiler alert, up until last night, actually, I've only watched the black and white version of this film. I feel that the color version opened up so many things that I hadn't noticed before, little things. Uh, but it's a mis- uh, it's a wonderful life. It's been one of my holiday favorites. Every year I try to sit down and watch the movie. Usually I do it alone for some weird reason. Um, it's typically later in the evening. I sit down with a beverage and I just watch this movie. I've always wondered why it's a Christmas movie. I think a lot of it is because it takes place during Christmas time. But then there's just those overarching themes that appeal to us during the holidays. And especially towards the end of the year, where we start to look back on the good and the bad and balance our life that just flew by in the past 12 months. And now I present It's a Wonderful Masonic Life. 
I'd like to think that before I was a Mason, that I looked at life from multiple angles. Clearly, I was trying. I saw the holidays as a time, a season, a single episode, and the yet-to-be-determined series that would become my life. It wasn't until I reached my 30s that I really understood the meaning of Christmas time. I was thumbing through the TV guide one Christmas Eve, looking for something to watch during the downtime between putting the kids to bed and before we prepared for Santa's arrival. My eye caught the title, It's a Wonderful Life, and somehow I had made it this far in life without seeing the holiday classic. I remember my dad making a big deal when NBC started airing this in 1994. To me, it was just some old black and white movie. I preferred the 24 Hours of the Christmas Story on TBS. Sorry, Dad, I'll leave the nostalgia to you. But something was different that night. I decided to make the two hours and 15 minute commitment with a bottle of wine. After all, it was my duty to be sure that the kids were really asleep. It's a Wonderful Life is a part of my holiday routine. And every year when I sit down to watch it, Something new in the film gets my attention. Could it be how Bedford Falls represents every town USA? Is it that George Bailey had dreams and a plan to leave Bedford Falls? And every time he had the chance to get out, he would get reeled back in by some strange coincidence or series of events that prevented him from going. As a Freemason, I'll never forget the scene on Integrity, when Mr. Potter offered him $20,000, which, keep in mind, at the time to buy a house in Bedford Falls, it was $5,000. And George said, I don't need 24 hours to say no to this offer. How about George has one of the worst days of his life? Talk about a bad day at work. He had the absolute worst day at work when his uncle forgot to make the payment to the bank. And he comes home. And what does he do? You could see that he's visibly agitated and frustrated. And he's snapping at his kids and his wife and yelling at them. Who hasn't gone through that as a man? And in his moment of desperation, he's clinging on to the one financial piece of good news he feels he has, which is a life insurance policy that guarantees that he is, quote, worth more dead than alive. Then there's the bridge scene where even when you're watching this with the gritty, black-and-white, old-style movie, in your mind, you can see how deep that water is and imagine how cold it must be. Knowing the pain in George's eyes every time that something had gone wrong in his life, the joy that causes his voice to crack when everyone in the town comes to his aid, I try to find a quiet night. I start that movie, and I enjoy the whole experience. Every year, Clarence's line to George, each man's life touches so many others. When he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? It catches my ear. It does so because it connects quite a few thoughts. The first is in the section of our fellow craft degree that literally discusses our personal contact with others, the influence that we have on those who share our circle. How as Masons, we strive to be charitable, honest, and humble. Whether it's ringing a bell for the Salvation Army on a cold winter night for just a few hours, maybe collecting coats for the homeless, shopping for gifts for those who are less fortunate, serving warm meals in soup kitchens, or simply just making time to connect with those who are alone this time of year, it's rewarding to know that we have brothers who give time to make the holidays merry for those in need. And I think that's where the real connection comes into play. We realize as Masons that our work is to bring light to dark places. And even if I don't get a chance to meet these brothers or fully learn the details of their work, these men share the same title of brother as I do. And that makes us one and the same. The second part of Clarence's line, it brings a tear to my eye every year when I think of our brothers who have laid down their working tools. Those men who were pillars in our lodges as role models and mentors, whose encouraging words or kind smiles made us feel welcome and valued. 
And while I had visions of my brothers who have gone to join the grand architect of the universe, I also thought of a brother who I haven't seen in a lodge meeting for a number of years. Work, his family, and caring for his wife are all reasons why he hasn't been able to attend meetings. But deep down inside, he's also lost the passion for knowledge. And I fear that is the true loss, as that energy could fill a small library. But because of disagreement with his lodge brothers, he is no longer active. I still hold out hope that one day he chooses to put on a dark suit and tie and surprise them at a meeting. After watching It's a Wonderful Life, I always send him a text just to see how everything is in his world. Lying in bed after watching It's a Wonderful Life, I often stare up to the ceiling, reflecting on the year before I fall asleep. I realize that there's a reason why we love It's a Wonderful Life. It's watching George Bailey's story, because it causes us to examine our own. We choose to gather with our closest friends and family this time of year for a reason. We want to remember this feeling, knowing that years from now, those hugs from grandparents or the sound of giggling kids will be our most precious memories. Reflecting on the Masonic year has the same effect. Dinners, ritual practices, installations of new officers, community service, the raising of brothers. Those moments will all serve as highlights of the year. While we may know the men who we share that time with, we may never truly understand the significance of these shared experiences in their lives. This ripple effect is a theme I understood throughout the movie, and somehow this year, the mix of new relationships and old memories made a deeper connection to the difference we make as Masons and the lives of those we interact with. And this year, it did bring a tear to my eye when I saw Clarence's note to George and Clarence's copy of Tom Sawyer. Remember, no man is a failure who has friends. Wherever you are this year, my brother, I send you the warmest holiday greetings. May you continue to bring light into every life that you touch. This has been the Craftsman Online Podcast. I'm sorry it's a short episode this week, but a holiday message just for you. If you've enjoyed this episode and you want to hear more, you can just tell Siri or Alexa to play the Craftsman Online Podcast. We're available on all streaming platforms with new episodes every Monday morning. And don't forget... Our special countdown of the 10 most listened to podcast episodes starts next week. Until next time, let peace and harmony prevail.